Here is just a few of my collection of very powerful ferrite magnets that I have salvaged from old microwave oven magnetrons. I'll cover how to get these magnets out, what they're used for, how a magnetron operates, because it is a vacuum tube, and some basic schematics on a microwave oven. So let us begin our journey to magnetrons. Here is a typical magnetron from a microwave oven. Down here are your cathode connections. It's also your filament connections. This is where you're going to find anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 volts negative polarity. That's also The filament also is your cathode. The entire case out here is your anode. It's connected. Um, it is connected to the resonant cavity that also serves as your anode that we will see in a later slide. These are cooling fins. Your actual tube is buried under these cooling fins. This is where it has an, basically an antenna, and there's a hole at the top of this metal cylinder. This is where your microwave radiation comes from. If you look closely, you can see the donut magnet here, and there's one up in here. The purpose of these magnets is to confine the electric current from cathode to anode in the actual vacuum tube part of the magnetron in order to create what is essentially a high-powered oscillator. Here's a schematic of a typical magnetron electrical circuit. Usually it's some kind of transformer that has one low voltage, high current winding for the filament, which is also the cathode. This serves no other purpose than to heat the cathode to boil off electrons into the cavity. We have a diode here that on the positive half cycle, electrons are pulled off the plate of the capacitor here while electrons migrate through the diode and charge up the negative plate on the capacitor. And the only current flow, in my view, that you have at this time is through the diode to charge the capacitor. Because at this point, the anode being negative, is there's going to be no current flow. If we move a little further down, on the, po on the uh, negative half cycle, now the anode becomes positive. And what we have here too with this charge capacitor, that seems to me to be that the voltage from the transformer will add to the voltage of the charge capacitor. And now you're getting a current flow from cathode to anode. As a little bit more, I redrew that circuit in a different way. Same circuit as above. But these inductors are actually on the inside of the filament connections on the magnetron. More about that shortly. Here is what your anode side of the uh, magnetron really looks like. It's circular, has various cavities, and here is your cathode in the center. As it's heated and emits electrons, the two powerful magnets, both above and below, the resonator cavity confines the electrons into essentially a circular flow as shown here. The magnetic force deflects them in a sense shown that they tend to sweep around the circle. In doing so, they pump the natural resonant frequency of the cavities. The currents around the resonant cavities cause them to radiate electromagnetic energy at resonant frequency. What it is, it causes it to oscillate up in the gigahertz, very, very high frequency. You have an antenna that more or less collects this energy, which is in here, and out it comes. Again, you can see the magnets are up in here, and there's your magnet again. These heat sink fins are connected to the anode out here. For cooling purposes, obviously, you have a fan that blows air through it to cool off the magnetron. All right, how to get the magnets out. Again, 
how this is, the entire case is grounded to the chassis in the microwave. You got magnets here, got magnets here. These fins are what is connected to the anode here to cool it. And if you notice these tabs in the corners, you'll find four of them. Doesn't matter if there's a screw on the magnetron or screws in the microwave oven chassis, you have to remove four screws to pop the magnetron out. Make sure you discharge the high voltage capacitor with a screwdriver across its terminals. Most modern um, capacitors have a bleeder resistor, but it may not be there. Short out the terminal connections on the capacitor. Please make sure the device is unplugged. Let me be very clear. Never, ever, ever put your hands inside a microwave oven or moving or, or trying to move stuff around with the power on. Even if you don't think the magnetron is on, never, ever, ever put your hands in a live microwave oven with the cover off. Never. Anyway, you can break these tabs or pull them apart on all four sides. Same thing here. It's just a little bent ear or wing or something. Bend it, pull it apart, and you can take the top part here. This is the antenna assembly, and that's where the microwave radiation comes out is through that hole. Pull it up, pull it directly apart. It's that simple. Note from your filament connections here, a set of heavy wires goes up the center to the main, the actual magnetron cavity and tube assembly is here. As you pull it apart, you'll have to clip those wires and the magnets are more or less just pop right out. That's all there is to that. Finally, let's take a tour of the electrical controls and this is probably an older microwave oven. Here is your power in, you have a fuse. Under no circumstances do you, should you ever cut the ground pin on a device like a microwave oven, because I've seen it before where this high voltage winding will short into the chassis and somebody, and that ground is designed to blow the fuse or else you've got an electrified and very dangerous piece of equipment sitting on your counter. Nonetheless, as you move through the schematic here, you have a couple of thermal switches. These are, these are thermal cutout switches. If the magnetron gets too hot or your fan or something gunks up and is not cooling it like it should or the cavity gets hot, these will blow open. To keep, uh, um, these are safety devices. Never bypass or tamper with them. All right, then we have something called primary switch and monitor switches. The primary switch, very simply, if you have the door open, the primary switch is open and you will never be able to turn on the magnetron. Never, ever tamper with these switches. If these switches, you, if you ever got to replace them, replace them with the original and make sure it's connected properly. If the door is open the way this is, way this looks, and this uses a main relay, there's a main relay here on the board that will turn on your oven lamp and your fan motors and all this stuff. But your main power relay is here that supplies power to the high voltage transformer. Here's the same basic design that I had before or the alternative design. This is the cavity and the anode. It's connected to chassis ground, which is the case, which is the case of the microwave. Here's your diode. Here's a bleeder resistor inside your cap. And here's your filament windings. This shows the inductors that are inside that go to the actual tube cavity. These are what you have to cut when you pull it apart. To get the magnets out and that's pretty much it uh, if you're and so that's all there is to it so 
if you get hold of a microwave, make sure you discharge this cap, even if, and by the way, these diodes, I have never seen them in any microwave that I've serviced or scrapped, so I guess they could be there, but I've never seen them. Um, so if you're taking it apart, just in case, short the capacitor leads out with a screwdriver. Make sure everything is unplugged when you scrap it, and with these microwaves, you can get yourself some very you can get yourself some very nice magnets okay if you would hit the like button visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com have a great day